friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today I have a very simple and easy Inkscape tutorial for you. If you don't know what Inkscape is, it is a free design program that kind of mimics Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, but it is free. There is no commitment to it. I love it. So today in Inkscape, I am going to show you how to get texts inside of clip arts like a heart. This is actually really simple and super easy. You can do it with any text in any shape that you want. Today, what I'm gonna show you is how to get song lyrics inside of a heart. The heart we are going to find in our Internet Explorer, bring it inside, trace the bitmap, and then put in our texts. Okay, so let's get started. Again, this is going to be a very simple and easy tutorial. So very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go into your Google internet browser and you wanna search up heart PNG. And it's gonna take you over to this all screen. We're just gonna click over into images. The very first one that I see is this black one. You can choose any one that you wanted, any, um, I wouldn't choose these two because it would be kind of hard to put your text inside of. So you want one that has like a full heart um, it doesn't matter which one that you choose, just choose one. So I'm gonna use this black one. I am going to right click this and I'm gonna open image in new tab and a new tab is going to open up. Then what you wanna do is you wanna take a screenshot of just this black heart. So command shift four on your keyboard if you're using a Mac and you wanna take a screenshot. So this little aiming thing will pop up. We're only taking a picture of the entire heart. Don't cut the heart off. When I let go, my screenshot's gonna drop down here in the bottom. We are gonna go back over into Inkscape and I'm gonna drag my screenshot into Inkscape. I don't know what any of this means to me. I just press, okay, I've used this program for years. I've never pressed anything on that button. Okay, so this right here is going to pop up. This may look like a image that you could cut or design with, it is not. We need to change this over from a screenshot to a cuttable file. So what we need to do is, is we need to right click and we need to go to trace bitmap. This box is going to pop up. It will look like the same thing of what we have in the other field. All we wanna do is press update. If you are using an image that is red or a different color, you may need to bump up the threshold a little bit and keep pressing update to get cleaner lines. Sometimes like with red, you have to be bumped up pretty hard for the system to be able to read that red heart. But because I'm using black, black is the easiest color for the system to read, I really didn't even have to change those numbers over because it's black, you, it, it saw what I needed to trace. So making sure we have pressed this update button, it will look like nothing has changed. We're gonna come over here to okay, and then we're gonna exit out of this. So come over here to the left and exit out. It will still look like nothing's, nothing has changed. Let's drag down what we've created. Okay, so when I've dragged down the top layer. Do you see how now I have two hearts? The heart that we traced, if you're looking at the back of your project board, this like rectangle right here is our project board. If we can see it inside of the square, this rectangle dotted lines, uh, rectangle square thing, if you can see your project board, that means that is your new image. If we click back over into our original heart that we uploaded and we try and drag this over, do you see how we can't see the line behind that heart inside of the dotted rectangle? That means that that was our original screenshot. We don't want that, so we're gonna delete that. Here is now our heart. Okay, so to do the next step, what you wanna do, and I suggest this just so we don't lose our font, you're gonna wanna change this over. We can change it later but you wanna change this over and we're just gonna do pink just so that's easier for us to see. Then what you wanna do is insert a text box. So let's go over here into the A and we're gonna insert a text box, clicking anywhere. Okay, for me, because I'm using song lyrics today, I'm gonna to go back into my Google and I'm gonna search up some song lyrics. Now I chose a random song that just popped in my brain. I don't know why this song popped in my brain but I did. Searched up, my heart will go on song lyrics and this popped up. If you have a letter, if, if, if you wanna put something else inside your heart, 
Just type that out in your text box. All I'm going to do now is I am going to copy these song lyrics, go back into Inkscape, and I'm gonna paste them into that box that we've created. Now, you see how when I wrote, when I pasted it in there, it copied just the way it looked like in here. What I want to do now is I'm going to go in. You can do this later. It's just easier if you get this done now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in and I am going to just re-space these out as if it's like an actual letter. Okay, so I'm done. It looks like one really long run-on sentence. Let's go over here into the arrow and it just looks, again, like one really long run-on sentence. Trust that it's all there. So clicking on our text box, we are gonna press shift on our keyboard and click that heart. And then we're gonna come up here into text and then we're gonna go to flow into frame. Now let's zoom in. That really long run-on sentence, see how it's all in there now? Okay, so now what we can do is we can unclick out of that, double clicking on our font, our, our font box. We can go and select the different font that we wanted. This is any font that you want, press apply. And then what we also can do is we can also change the sizing. When we went to 20, it was way too big. So let's go down to 10 and press apply. Okay, so for me in the font that I've chosen, 10.8 was the perfect font for this. Okay, if you wanted to, you can adjust your line sizing here or you could also adjust the spacing of the letters. I don't generally need to do this step when it comes to Inkscape, but you can definitely re-space these letters to where they're tighter together. When you start doing that, your letters are gonna move around. And so then you might be able to get like larger letters. So let's go, since I made it a little bit tighter, let's do 11 and see what happens. And that fills it out a little bit better. So playing around with the spacing and the uh, spacing between the letters and also the lines will give you a, a different look. Okay, when you have everything set the way you want it to look like, if you were to try and move this heart to readjust it a different size, what happens is, is it's stuck with that, that pink heart. Then if you try and just click that pink heart, delete, and then move this, what happens is, is it now gets, see how it goes back to that original line? So we've missed a step here. So we're gonna go back, and what we need to do is we need to click back into what is our text that's now in the shape of a heart. We're gonna come over here into path and we're gonna do it object to path. When you do this step, before you do this, everything that is inside your text box, make sure that the spelling is spelled correctly, your spacing is the way you want it, the punctuation is the way you want it. Because when you did this, what happens is, is now we took an edible text format of something and we just changed it over into a cut object or an engraved object. So we can't go back in and change or edit any of this text now. So when you have that done, we can click out of that and we can click on that pink heart and we can go ahead and delete that. And then when you go ahead and move this, this is now our finished heart design. So you can go ahead and resize this if you wanted to. Or I'm gonna come over here into the lock button. Whenever I resize anything that has texts, I always like to make sure that we're resizing this proportionally so you don't distort your fonts. I'm just gonna resize this to fit inside of my project board. I'm gonna come over here and this is the original design that I did and I'm just gonna delete it because I don't need it anymore. Now, there is still one step that we are missing for this. If you wanted to go ahead and just print this, like copy and print onto a printer and then frame it into a frame, you don't have to do this step because it will print exactly the way it's, a way it's shown. You can go ahead and go here and we can change the color of the font if you wanted to and it will all stay the same. However, if you were to go to cut this it, or engrave this, it would engrave really bad. So the very next step you wanna do is you want to Command, Shift, and G, which is ungroup, and you're ungrouping all of the letters. And then you wanna do Command, Shift, and the plus sign. 
And that is we're welding everything together. We're combining it. So what you wanna do is you want to weld everything together. And so when you go to put this like on your laser cutter or in your craft cutters, like your Cricut, Cricut or Silhouette, it's going to cut beautifully without any type of weirdness going on. And then when you save this and upload it also into your craft, in your uh, other software programs, it will just show up just like that. All right, y'all, I sure hope I helped you out in a little bit of Inkscape knowledge, and I will see you later.